In the early hours of the 8th of August 1963, 15 men committed the most unique and audacious robbery Britain had ever seen. Holding up the Glasgow to Euston mail train, the gang got away with £2.6 million, equivalent to around £45 million in today's money. The robbery and subsequent investigation captured the imagination of the British public, and interest remains strong decades later. Former Scotland Yard Detective Chief Inspector Steve Gaskin is holding a series of talks to mark the anniversary. What fascinates me is they were all given polit- what I call political sentences because it was unprecedented. They got 30 years. None of them served anywhere near 30 years. Uh, but I think there was political interference. Now, the train was stopped at Sears Crossing between Cheddington and Leighton Buzzard, but they forced the driver, Jack Mills, to take the front two carriages, which contained all the money and the high-value packages, another half mile down the track here to Bredego Bridge, where, under cover of darkness, they formed a human chain and unloaded their loot. The gang's leader, Bruce Reynolds, used inside information to plan the caper, prompting massive security changes. Graham Satchwell is a former railway detective who's written about the robbery. From the next TPO movement, uh, it, it was loaded with uniform constables. And um, within a very sh- short time, within months, there were a- a- arrangements uh, in place right across the country so that police officers, uniformed police officers, would always escort TPOs, whether they were coming from Weymouth or from Bristol or from Scotland or wherever. The majority of the gang was eventually caught and sentenced to a combined total of over 300 years imprisonment. But some, such as Bruce Reynolds, Buster Edwards and Ronnie Biggs, spent years on the run, helping the robbers to achieve near-celebrity status. But experts say questions still remain about the case. What happened to the money? That is one of the biggest questions. Who was Mr Big? Who was the guy that actually set the robbery up? Who were the three unknown robbers? And who was the insider who gave the information on which the train robbery depended? Meanwhile, the human toll cannot be forgotten. Both train drivers died within the next 10 years, their families saying the robberies contributed to their ill health. But despite that, the fascination with the story continues, fuelled by a raft of books exploring new angles of the case. This book tells the story of the South Coast Raiders and their considerable success leading up to and participation in the Great Chain Robbery. And it's not a glorified tale. This is a story of of an individual being dragged into significant, serious crime. With new books coming out every few years, it seems anniversaries of this historic crime will be marked for decades to come. Ray Addison, GB News.